Coaster. Oh, how's that? Fat base there, Steffi, fat base. And um, Head Heart and Balls is back with the stats, the facts, the mishaps and the odds. It's sort of like a one-stop shop and uh, it's great to be back. How was the sabbatical over the summer in between seasons, Nisbo? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But I tell you what, I'm ready for footy. It's been a long time since we've seen a decent game of footy. So uh, put away the whites. Rugby started. Yeah, good on you, mate. <laughs> it looks like an exciting little time down there in the Petoni office. Before we focused your camera, I saw um, some um, Kleenex tissues, a specimen jar, and a box of wet wipes. <laughs> <laughs> you saw that, did you? Yeah, down, Sorry. down on the I, desk, yeah. You weren't meant to see that. <laughs> and how about you, St- How about you, Steph? Are you find love over summer, mate? Uh, well, you know, I've, 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 as time goes on, I've embraced self-love. Yeah. And, and it works <laughs> for me, you know? Um, <clears throat> If you get disappointed, you only got yourself to answer to. So I've had a few sort of set twos with myself, <laughs> but um, I've resolved it, and uh, I never go to bed on an argument. I always make up with myself, and then wake up and all good. Oh, geez, I admire you, mate. But yeah, it has been an exciting start. We haven't seen much footy, but let's start with the tens. Uh, a bit of hope for the Blues. A bit of momentum going forward. Was Carlos Spencer? The lucky charm. Of course he was. Um, (laughs) I don't know if it was accidental lucky charm, but look, I know the Blues have copped a lot over the years, um, but I think most New Zealanders were actually happy for them because, you know, they won a trophy. And the the funny thing was they went to put the trophy in the trophy cabinet and they found out that their commercial manager had had put it on (laughs) Trade Me and sold it because they just had no trophies. You can't give it away. Yeah, Yeah. so now it's just in the cloakroom, yeah. Oh, good stuff. And uh, Nisbo, you would have been disappointed with the Canes or just don't you really give a rat's ass falling short in the final? No, I didn't give a toss because I backed the Blues to win it. And, uh, <laughs> so I was real happy, I'll tell you. Oh, good stuff, mate. And uh, looking forward um, to the Blues season, um, we've got Bryn Gatlin, good little head on his shoulders. Is he the man? Uh, is he going to be the magic man for the Blues this year? Yeah, look, he could be, um, and he needs to be. Uh, so much talk about him sort of emerged, I guess, on the national psyche in the Lions tour when he when he got the start against his dad's team, and I thought, God, there's too much pressure on this young fella, but he he, he was awesome, and yeah. um, he's been great in, in the next level down in the provincial rugby, but um, big questions need to be asked of him, and he has shown in the past he can answer them, so looking forward to seeing how he progresses. Yeah, Enrico, you want to? You reckon he'll be moving to the centres again? <laughs> I don't know. He's he's a centre wing, um, a bit like Seta Tamani Valu is quite effective in both spots as well. And in this day and age, the modern rugby player, if they can play more than one position, it sort of helps out their um, ambitions for the higher levels. Although I think he has got a wing spot locked up for the All Blacks anyway. Yeah, look, what people tend to forget is this is the hardest conference, uh, and you only have to trip up a few times, and you're down the you're down the list a wee bit. Uh, there is no tougher conference than New Zealand. I mean, we'll discuss the other teams, I'm sure. But uh, the Blues have been slightly under par for a few seasons and they just even haven't been able to crack those big local derbies. That's the key for them, obviously, this year. They need to crack some local derbies and get themselves up the top of that New Zealand conference. And a team that I'm looking forward to, the Blues are actually playing the Landers down on Forsyth Bar this weekend. And, geez, they've still got a great line-up. Uh, their million-dollar man, Lima Sopawanga, should he be starting or do we sort of blood the new talent in Fletcher Smith? Oh, look, I think uh, from the Highlanders' point of view, you want to play your best players. And uh, certainly Lima Sopawanga's only got one year left to go. And they'll want to get maximum value out of him uh, for sure. So you throw him in with the two Smiths, Liam Squire, um... Uh, Naholo, gee whiz. I mean, it's a, it's a terrific team again, the Highlanders. And the real interest there will be, of course, the impact that uh, Aaron Major will have. Aaron Major has come back as a, as a former Crusader in All Black and gone to the Highlanders. And he said that he's not changing the culture greatly. So I'm expecting that they'll have a pretty good season. So well, not changing the culture, plenty of beers post the game. <laughs> um, it's great stuff. But they had a good hit out in pre-season against the Crusaders. Is that a testament to what we may see from the Highlanders, um, Steffi? Yeah, look, I think in past years, I haven't taken too much, um, put too much weight on the pre-season games, but big names were playing in that last pre-season game for, for all the New Zealand teams. And that pre-season game and also uh, the one up in Walkworth, um, I think they are a good pointer and for teams like the Highlanders who who sweat on um, you know just that psychic energy that Murray Mexley talks about they've got that now and uh, first up at home they're hard at home um, this is a great launching pad for them. Let's uh, move to the Crusaders. Crusaders geez you just look at this lineup 
and the boys, they still just got all the heavy hitters, you know, in the forwards, Crockett, Barrett, Taylor, Franks, Moody, Romano, Todd, Reed, Samu, Jordan Tafil, Whitelock. Gives you the heebie-jeebies <laughs> as reading that lineup. You must be um, sweating bullets there for the Canes, um, Grant. Well, I mean, the big thing is when will a lot of these key players actually come back into it? We know Kieran Reed's probably not going to be there for most of the season or at least half of the season. And when will Franks come back? When will Moody come back? So, But as you say, they have enormous depth. There's no doubt about that. When you can replace one All Black with another, which is effectively what happens, it's a terrific forward pack. I'll be interested in the impact that Ronan O'Gara has maybe on mm. the back line. Um, you know, it's a bit of a surprise that the former Irish international and Lions player has come over to New Zealand. Good on him. And uh, let's see whether the back line can function. And, um, and, I, and I guess it starts at Richie Moonga. This is the guy who made huge strides last year. Can he do it again? Can he carry on? His, his brief, his job title is defence coach, Nisbo. And that's a bit like me being a synchronised swimming coach. Um, I, I, I'm terrible at it. Um, Ronan O'Gara certainly didn't put it the fear of uh, any attackers with his defence. No, no, it's a, it's a name. Um, what it really means, I don't know. But I'd imagine, uh, being a bloke who played well over 100 test matches for Ireland, I bet he'll have a lot of impact and influence on those inside backs mm. and the guys that, you know, where his real expertise lies. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to having a few uh, post-match Ganai with him. Um, and just, uh, you know, just learn that Irish accent. I'm sure he'll have a few... Uh, oh, he'll have a few, few yards. What yeah. do they say? Good crack. you have good crack. Jeez, I, I hope he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway. <laughs> anyway, they're taking on the Chiefs. And uh, the Chiefs, they had a good hit out in the preseason. Brad Webber, he was quite impressive. A hat-trick within, what, half an hour of the game. And he's going to be an exciting one pairing up with um, McKenzie because... He's got a massive season ahead of him if he wants to crack the ABs again. Yeah, the, look, the big talking point out of the Chiefs is McKenzie in the 10 jersey. Uh, he sort of made it no secret that that's where he sees his future. Um, Colin Cooper, the new coach as well, so the Cooper McKenzie. So while it's every season on season, it's quite settled for most teams. That's a mass. That's the biggest change in the New Zealand conferences. Damian McKenzie, um, just a dynamo at fullback, yeah. um, won't have the space and time. No. And now he's the general, he's the decision maker. Uh, but I really like the fact that other franchises in past years have chased him and yep. said, we'll give you the 10 jersey, we'll give you the 10. And he was prepared to say, no, I'm not going to take all that money. I'm going to stay here under Aaron Cruden and learn from one of the best. Um, I think his preparation and his readiness for this assignment is there. And uh, we, sh we, we should see something pretty special from uh, the, the man from Invercargill. Yeah, you bang on, mate. He played 15 last year, beat 80 defenders in the Super Rugby, so he was a standard. I think there was like 19 um, more than anyone else. I think Havili was the second. Uh, Jimmy Lowe, he's gone over to Ireland, and uh, he's at first five. Big, big super season for Damien McKenzie. Um, one to look out for as well, Sean Stevenson. Yeah, the hot stepper. Um, he's... he. He's the sort of guy I think just needs more time at the top level. Yeah. Um, just decision making and positioning, and he's got some good fellas around him. And if I was him, I'd be training, I'd be eating, not sleeping, but next to Charlie Nartai, who's got one of the smartest minds in, in that Chiefs backline, and just learn and ooze off him. I know Stephen Donald took him under his wing yeah. when he first started playing uh, Mighty 10 Cup. So, um, yeah, oh, potential there for Sean. Yeah, and also Charlie Naitai and Sam Kane doing the co-captaincy. Uh, interesting one giving it to Charlie Naitai in my uh, in my stance, Nisbo. Yeah, look, he's an experienced player these days. He's been playing around the Super Rugby scene now for six or seven years. He was at the Hurricanes for a while, of course, and he's gone to the Chiefs. OK, he's been out with uh, concussion issues and all the rest of it, but Staff hit it on the head. He's a... Uh, He's a heady sort of a bloke. I think he'll, I think he'll do a good, go, a good job. Now, a news flash, boys. Sean Stevenson, I don't think, will be available in the first week. He's injured, which is disappointing. But uh, what I'm really looking forward to in this game is that direct match between Moanga and McKenzie. And that, I mean, mm. that will tell us something about where these two guys are going to go this season. Yeah, 100%. And while we're talking about this game, one that really, a name that really makes me weak at the knees, and it's great to see him back in the mix, a, a real a real smoky Mike Delaney. 
Oh, this is magnificent. What a story. It is a hell of a story. Yeah, he, he's more he's more salt than pepper, is Mike <laughs> Delaney, and just a hell of a bloke. And, and I know he just about fell over when he got named, but he's just going, yeah, I've, I've still got my, uh, my O'Brien moulded soles rugby boots. I'll, I'll keep keep cracking it out. But invaluable, those sorts of players. You can't have lots of them in your squad, but just to have one or two who've had got so you know, so much rugby miles in their, in their legs. And I know, Nisbo, you're, you're a big uh, supporter of Mike Delaney and players of his ilk. Absolutely. He reminds me so much of David Holwell, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, Guys yep. who, who play on over 30 and play to the same standard, same. And really, when you look at it, Moanga with, uh, with uh, Delaney down there and with Ronan O'Gara in his ear, if he's not getting the best advice in the whole country, I don't know who is. Yeah, it reminds me of your least densenesses of this oh. world. Could we do a whole show on Lee Stinson yeah, well, and Sam can. Doyle? Yeah. Get him in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, looking now, looking to the Canes. Oh, obviously, Chris Boyd last season with the Canes. You must be gutted. Grant? Well, yes and no. Um, because there's, Yes, because he's going, obviously. But no, because there's a direct line of succession. John Plumtree will take over. I don't think it's been announced yet, but it's an open secret. Um, so, you know, uh, the, the, there's a succession there. The good thing about the Canes this year, I think, is that nothing much has changed. They haven't had any major losses. Uh, sure, they've got injuries to start the season. Dane Coles won't be there. Uh, Milner Scudder won't be there. Geordie Barrett won't be there for a couple of weeks. So, you know, there's some key guys missing early. But once everybody's back in train, and some of those guys coming off long-term injuries, uh, you know, guys like uh, Blade Thompson coming back after a long-term injury break, and these sort of guys, I think the Canes are looking stable, and they're looking pretty damn good. Yeah, you're right. They do welcome us back as well in the front row. Toby Smith with experience with the Wallabies, which is quite nice touch. Asafo Amua ate too many pies, and Leon Rouges over the summer obviously came back with some skin folds that the... <laughs> the testers didn't enjoy. Um, so he's missing out as well, which puts a lot of pressure on uh, Ricky Riccatelli. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and what a good message to be able to send early in the season. Uh, come back fighting fit or don't come back at all. And, um, you know, these uh, these young fellas have to learn a few lessons from time to time. And, uh, and I, I guarantee in a couple of weeks he'll be fizzing. When the team gets back from South Africa, he'll be fizzing and saying, hey, pick me, pick me. And another guy that's put on weight for the right reasons, Geordie Bar- Barrett, put seven or eight kegs on. And he is a big human being. Yeah, six six, and he's weighing over a hundred kegs now. What's this? Is he wanting to get get back into the centres? Is that is that the plan? Well, maybe Locke with his brother, <laughs> with Scotty Barrett. I think he's bigger than his brother now, Scott Barrett. But um, yeah, I think he probably wants to get back into the centres. Um, we haven't seen the best of Geordie yet. We've seen the potential. If he can just get a season injury free, I think by the end of this season. He'll be absolutely flying. And one name I wanted to chuck at you for the Hurricanes, and he's been in the system for a little while, but he's had a number of injuries, had a bit of concussion issues as well, but he's back as Matt Proctor. Now, he's the sort of guy... um, Now, James Marshall, when he was in the Hurricanes, no one really realised how valuable he was until he left because he was the fix-it man. He was the no-mistake man. He could play anywhere. Great cricketer as well, wasn't he? Great cricketer, great punter. You know, I, I love Jimmy Marshall. But Matt Proctor, for me, is going to be the quiet achiever and uh, as long as he stays injury-free, I think he'll make huge strides this season. 100%. And uh, Bodie Barrett, he's uh, one game shy or three games shy of playing his 100th Super Rugby game and also two points away from becoming the fourth player in Super Rugby history to score 1,000 points. What an effort. Yeah, he's not a bad player, Bodie, is he? He's not nah. bad. I think he's going to be late over to South Africa, um, and I'm pretty sure he's going to be put on the bench against the Bulls. Well, he's coming off a three-day bender, isn't he? Yeah. Two winnings in a row or something like Two that. Two winnings so, um, and no funeral. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, no, that's good stuff. Um, and something that will um, get your tickle, your pickle, or your fancy, should I say, Grant, Tom Wardrum, returning back to Wellington Rugby. <laughs> How good. Yeah. How good. Have you had much Fantastic. to do with him in the past? Uh, no, not a lot. Staff probably knows him better than I do. But, um, uh, yeah, I've, I've, I've certainly had things to do with him. But he's been away for so damn long. But... Uh, this is fantastic, and I tell you what, he could still play Super Rugby at a very, very good level, and uh, it might be interesting next year when Brad Shields, of course, uh, heads north. And if you know, if Waldron was to put in a good, uh, a good shift with the Wellington Lions this year, and I'm sure he will, they might even say, "Hey, you're 35, but so what? Let's play some Super Footy as well." 100%. He will. Uh, he's not coming over just to just to sort of louse about. He's yeah. he's. He's an out-and-out professional, and he'll be an absolute leader for the Wellington uh, Wellington team 
and um, he's not here just to finish off and then hang his boots up. He'll want a stonker and play Super Rugby. You watch. Yeah, Brad Thorne type. Toot toot. Absolute rib snorter and legend. Okay, lads, let's look at the outright winner. The Sade is still the favourite um, at $4. The Canes at $4.50. Breathing hot on their heels. Chiefs, the Landers at 7s and Blues at 10 Do you think we'll see any surprises this year? No, no, I don't. And, and, and I don't know whether I'd include the Lions this year simply no. because the draw doesn't suit them as well as it did last year. Remember, yeah. they, they didn't play any New Zealand teams in New Zealand. They didn't come here, I don't think, last year. Uh, this year it's a bit different. So look, it's going to come out of the New Zealand Conference. Uh, you can't discard the Crusaders. Uh, they won it and won it on it merits last year. They've got tremendous depth in their squad. Um, so they're right up there. Hurricanes are right up there. Um, then after that, I actually prefer the Highlanders before the Chiefs. Yep. So um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But I, I do think it'll come out of New Zealand. Staffy, so what we're trying to say is the Blues will fit, uh, finish the top of the bottom of the ladder this year, we reckon, again. Yeah, there's potential there for them. Yeah. They really, really need a good start, the Blues. If they can pick up a win um, at the start, if they if they can go maybe five games with three wins, that that's a pretty good start for them. And I, and I hope they do okay. But um, given that there's no, no games in, by, being played by the New Zealand teams, it definitely looks to me like a Crusaders Hurricanes final this far out yeah um, but to pick the overall winner it's all about depth because injuries happen Crusaders by far have the best depth of any team okay let's look at the games for this weekend let's start with the Blues and the Highlanders Nisbo this is yours what's your pick for this head hard and balls multi yeah look this is a fantastic start it really is um it's down in Dunedin and it's under the roof so forget about all the bad weather that we may or may not have been having uh, throughout the week Forget about that because it won't be applicable. Um, but I'm going to go with the Highlanders. Um, I think that they probably have, I mean, if you look at the teams on paper, they probably have a better team and they've got match winners. You know, Ben Smith's firing, ready to go. He's had his holiday. Aaron Smith, you know, best halfback going round. Uh, Wasaki Naholo, uh, outstanding all black winger. Liam Squire, ready to go. I, I just think, man for man, they look a better team. But I reckon, I reckon it'll be close. Yeah, I agree with that. Holland so, Hollanders 12 and under. And Hollanders 12 and under. Nisbo just mentioned who I think, again, crystal ball gazing yep. at the New Zealand Rugby Awards at the end of this year. New Zealand Super Rugby Player of the Year goes to Liam Squire. Wow. I, I think he is going to have a massive year this year. Yeah, I like that. The big unit. He is. Hell we should human. get him on the show. We will. We will. Well, we'll tee up something in a couple of weeks. You know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, well, now we're heading to the Crusaders and the Chiefs, and this is my pick. Uh, the Crusaders at home at AMI Stadium. I think they've won nine on the trot on their home turf. I think they're still going to be too good for the Chiefs, but I think it'll be closer, and I'm going 12 and under as well. Mm. Is that about the three buck mark as well? Uh, it's it? around two, yeah, two ninety three dollars All right, and that must leave me with the Hurricanes. <clears throat> yes, Hurricanes Bulls, um, coached by uh, the Journey, John Mitchell. Um, so <laughs> all week I've been thinking Hurricanes 13 and over because I've looked at that bull squad and, and it's a bit of a shambles so um, I've been thinking 13 and over but just early season I think the Hurricanes will be all over them but just execution they'll make silly mistakes and they'll drop the ball and, and all that sort of stuff so 12 and under probably towards the higher end probably 10, 11, 12 something like that but I'll take the Hurricanes 12 and under so we're all unders yeah perfect no, I like that. Multi that up and that'll bring you back three some... Three threes and nine threes. How much do we put on? Well, we'll put in about 20 bucks, wouldn't we? Perth. Perth. I'll be getting in around that. Oh. Well, there you have it, guys. We've um, done the sort of autopsy results on the pre-season of the games and it's looking all hunky-dory. We don't know till the first head out, but um, it's lovely to have you guys here you back probably in the mixer. You probably haven't got this on your script. I just want to know one player from each of you. I've yes. given you mine, Liam Squire. Like... Who are you looking forward to? Not not who's going to win Player of the Year, Nisbo. Which which person, which player are you looking forward to or might emerge or, or, or whatever this season? Yeah, good point. You've caught me right on the hop here, Steph, because, um, you know, I, sp I suppose if we're looking at a bloke who came through last year and you want a similar selection, it was uh, Nani Laomapi, wasn't it, who just suddenly mm. played such a great uh, season for the Hurricanes. I'm just trying to think of... I reckon it's a really big year. You talked about Liam Squire. A really big year for another guy in, a, in the same position, via Fafita. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think he's been quite as convincing at the top level as we need him to be. And so he's got to do it through Super Rugby. So I'll be keeping an eye on him. 
one guy that's been around the traps for quite a while. I'm being a bit biased here because I did spend New Year's with him. Hell of a bloke. Um, <laughs> and he probably played his best test match I think I've ever seen by a white human being um, against Wales, Sam Kane. Yeah. Um, you know, he's got the, the honour of leading the troops, uh, the Chiefs this year, and I just think that uh, he's going to start off on a good foot and he's just going to be relentless. His neck, his the circumference of his neck is probably about the same size as Persia. It's, it's, it's enormous. <laughs> Great girth. Great girth. He has girth. Very similar to Nisbo's, I reckon. Yeah, good yeah. neck. Yeah, good neck. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, lads, it's great to see your gorgeous faces again. Absolute honour. And um, why don't you have a fantastic day? All the punters out there, you do too. And uh, we'll see you next week. Like a roller coaster.